Hey everyone, Bimbo Cup here, welcome back to another video. And today, we are going to be talking about my top 10 2018 movies. Now, we did this last year with 2017, and everybody was bickering, and everyone, most of the people agree with my list on that one. Um, everyone's kind of surprised now. I, going back and rewatching that video, and rewatching all the movies that I did um, in 2017, my list kind of changed, um, but it's alright, we're not going to talk about that, we're going to talk about 2018, so this year, 2018 was an amazing year for cinema, for cinematic fans, for comic book fans, for musical fans, for horror fans, the last year was just crazy, there was a lot of films that came out, and starting this year with 2019, it's going to be even crazier, we've got sequels to 2018 films, we got prequels to other sets of movies that we haven't seen, we, we've got uh, new upcoming original movies, so it's going to be a, even crazier there than it was in 2018. But we're going to go from 10 all the way down to 1, and I picked down some of them. Um, I picked down a lot of them. Most, some of the other ones that I will mention come down at honorable mentions. When we get to my number 1, I'll go through my honorable mentions. I have picked out three of them uh, since they did not make it to my top. Now the honorable mentions do not, they do not, um, they do not come over the second movie. Okay, the honorable mentions come out as I like them, but they just didn't hit the top 10, and I love each and one of those three movies, and they would have made it on the list if I enjoyed them a little bit more going and seeing these. Um, I I have seen all these movies in uh, in movie theaters or in cinemas. I, some of these I went with family, and then some of these I went with friends, and I had a great time with all of these movies. And the majority of you guys are going to be, some are going to be like, what? And then others are going to see like, why I did it. Now, if you go to my social medias, you all know my top 10 movies. So if you are watching this, um, after seeing my social media post, uh, in this video, I'm going to explain why I picked these movies, and I've listed them down in different categories. This is how we're going to do it now, from now on. Uh, and I might do this with my spoiler reviews, because I know we're going to change up things how I do my spoiler reviews, because I know I make an hour-long video, or like half an hour-long videos, talking and rambling on about, like, I break down the scenes, and I kind of like just break down the entire movie. I don't talk about the movie as much. So, this year, we're going to switch it up a little bit. I might have myself, like, a group that does it with me. Um, a lot of these things are going to change this year, but that's another video to talk about. So, without further ado, let's start off with our top 10 movies of 2018. Coming up right now is Top 10, Skyscraper. Now, I'm a big Dwayne Johnson fan. I saw him in Baywatch, and I saw him in Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle in 2017. And he made his... Dwayne Johnson, for me, is a great actor. I love him. I love his enthusiasm. I love his sense of humor. And I love how strong he is. And in this movie, it kind of takes him away from the Dwayne character that we've seen in other movies. Yes, he's a typical strong and physical man, but in the inside, after his injury with uh, with an explosion, he lost one of his limbs, he lost one of his legs, and he has to wear it, he has to, one of, he has to wear one of the, um, a prosthetic leg, and for me, that took a lot of bit of the character, I loved seeing that progress, now when the first trailer dropped, I was kind of thinking, okay, this is on its own, and even though this is a tribute to the Die Hard movie with uh, Bruce Willis, when he was in that movie, Dwayne Johnson came out and told fans, this is not a remake, this is not a reboot, this is not, this is nothing that has to do with Die Hard, it's a tribute to that movie, and I respected Dwayne Johnson for that. I love this movie for the action, the cast, the story, those top three categories I love. I love the story between Dwayne Johnson protecting his family, protecting his wife and his two kids, and I love the plot that he was betrayed by one of his old comrades, and that scene where he, ha where he has to fight his friend in the kitchen, it took me away, because I was like, Ugh, I feel for these characters, even though I was introduced to these characters within 10 minutes of the movie, it still hit me down my heart that he had to kill his friend to get that information out. And I love seeing the struggle between Dwayne Johnson, where he has to battle the crown, where he has to battle the policeman, and where he has to battle the SWAT team, and then his physical battle with his body and the environment that he's dealt with, when he jumps from the crane, like the whole crane sequence, he has to climb up the crane, once he gets up there, he has to get in the cockpit, he has to open up the door because it's been locked, he has to push the crane into the window, and he thinks he can run on top of it and enter the building, but no, the crane won't reach that far enough, so he has to swing the crane back and forth until the crane hits the window, and then the SWAT team gets up there, the helicopters are there, he has to run, and then seeing him jump into the building, that's great, I love that, it's a constant struggle for Dwayne Johnson's character, and then he gets to one point in 
in the building, it's been locked down, then you have people shooting at him, then you have a scene where he has to jump out of the window while hanging onto a rope and rappel down, then he has to jump through all the propellers at the very top, and then seeing him use the environment against the terrorists at the very end, that was neat. And then seeing his his family, his wife was helping the SWAT team at the very end uh, take down the terrorists that were on the ground who were trying to flee the area, and then seeing his kids work together and they knew exactly what to do when the building was on fire and it was under siege, that was really great. So, if, if you're a Dwayne Johnson fan, or if you're a Dwayne Johnson hater, you can't deny, but in this movie, he really made a shine, and I know Rampage doesn't make a, it doesn't make, um, a Rampage came out also on the, also in 2018, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later, there was a little spoiler for one of my honorable mentions, when I get to Rampage, I'll talk a little bit more about Dwayne Johnson's character. Coming up at number 9 is Halloween. Now, this movie, I never did a trailer reaction before, but I really wanted to. And I'm a big, I'm a big Halloween fan. The first two Halloween movies from the old, old, old years, before I was even born, I love those two first movies. The original and then the sequel. But after that, the Halloween trilogy kind of went away, kind of like the, the Friday the 13th or the Nightmare on Elm Street. Those kinds of, I love those classic horror movies. And then what makes me like, laugh at them, or what makes me hate those old movies, is the sequels, the, the studio wanted to keep making money, they keep wanting to make reboots, because everybody was loving them, but every single time I watch one of the horror movies, I always enjoy it, whether it's goofy, or it's a sequel, or if it's trying to actually add something to it, so when they made this, when they came up with, to make up this reboot, kind of sequel to the original, they said it has nothing to do with the, with the old, uh, sequel movies, after the very first one, it's supposed to take up, like, 20 years, after the very first movie, and I loved it, everybody, the story, the score, the horror elements, and the suspense, and the casting crew was phenomenal, I believe, Lee Curtis's, like, her, her, um, paranoia, her, um, her protection over her family, that she was training her daughter, and then her granddaughter to, to be protective, and watch over the world, because she wasn't just trying to prepare them from, um, uh, for Michael Myers, she was trying to prepare her for the world, that the world may seem all lit up and everything, but it's filled with dark minds. And seeing each of the characters present in the interviews and seeing Michael Myers transform, because when he's first on screen, he just looks around while he's locked up in the in the jail, and then as all the other inmates are like freaking out, the dogs are freaking out, he's just standing there like, while the reporters are holding out the mask, and he's like, say something, say something. And then finally, the most brutal moment is where Michael finally breaks out. The reporters make it to a gas station, they're going to report somewhere else, and then Michael just shows up. He murders everyone at the gas station, and then, oh my god, the way that he was killing the reporter, smashing his head onto the door. I don't know how many times that guy could stand up, but he was just bleeding, and the woman is there just freaking out, he pulls her out, and he, oh my. And then it has that iconic score where Michael is pulling on the mask for the very first time. And then seeing the one shot of him going throughout the neighborhood was... Mm, I, I'm a big fan of one shots. I'm a big fan of... That's the stuff I love about cinematography. Is where you see a character or a set move in one direction. And seeing him walk up the main street, hit the two little kids, he goes into the, into the shop, grabs a hammer, kills a woman, he walks through the house... You think he's gonna kill the baby, but no, Michael ain't that crazy. He's not that killer vicious. Then he walks through the neighborhood, goes to a woman, she's on the phone, she hangs up the blindfolds, and then Michael's like, done. And then the the, the crown jewel of that movie was the little uh, African-American kid. Like, yeah, I know you smoke weed and you do all this with your boyfriend and everything. And I love, my second favorite part is the house scene where Lee Curtis has the entire house home alone proofed with traps and secret entrances, and then seeing her with the original, like, scar where she got stabbed, and then the money shot where Michael throws Lee Curtis off the balcony, she's there, he looks back, nobody's there, then he looks back, Lee Curtis is gone, and that is exactly how Michael Myers exited the original movie, where the, the, the doctor, the therapist, threw him over, the therapist looks over, he looks back, Michael's is gone, and that's so great, I cannot wait. There's supposed to be a sequel that comes out to this later on in the years, and I'm very excited to see where this is going. I hope it's not an endless struggle of where the granddaughter was holding a knife at the very end for protection. I hope she doesn't become the next Michael Myers, because I hate that trend where 
a certain character kills the villain or kills the monster or kills the creature and then that character is traumatized by that moment and they become the enemy or they become the bad guy. I hate those types of storylines. So maybe in the sequel they don't have to go down that route. But we did never we never saw Michael Myers die in the building and I love that. It's supposed to be its sequel, but it's also supposed to set up maybe a sequel or maybe it's just supposed to be the ending for Michael Myers' story. Coming up at number 8 is Venom. I am very surprised with this movie. Now, this is a movie that you can either love or you can hate or it's just a movie that you can sit down and watch. I love Tom Hardy. I'm a big Tom Hardy fan. When I saw him in Mad Max Fury Road, oh my god. I love his sense of action. When I saw him in The Dark Knight Rises, his portrayal of Bane made me forget all about the Bane that we saw in Batman and Robin. Oh my god, this man can act. And when he was cast to play Eddie Brock, and do the voice of Venom and the VFX for Venom, I was all in it. From the teasers, from the official trailer to the last trailer, I was in it. Now, there are some parts of the movie that I am not a big fan of, but I saw what they were doing and with the source materials, with the lethal protection, and the good side of Venom, and the set of the Carnage storyline, I was in it. I'm a big fan of Venom. Seeing Venom growing up in the cartoons, and then seeing him portrayed in Spider-Man 3, the cartoons handled it very well, but the but Sony wanted to rush Sam Raimi's last Spider-Man movie. It was going to be Spider-Man 3 and then Spider-Man 4, but Sony was like, no, we want that Venom, so put him in there. And Topher Grace, he tried. He tried to portray Venom and Eddie Brock, but it was just never enough. But Tom Hardy brings this brings this buddy cop side of Venom. I, 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 loved it. I loved the cast and crew. It was a small crew, and it was a small cast, but I, it, all the characters that were put on the screen, I felt with each single one of them. I liked seeing Tom Hardy went from this guy that was over the edge with his stories to being broken down without, like, involving Spider-Man or Peter Parker. Um, seeing uh, Anne Wayne being kicked out of lawyer, uh, being a lawyer and dating this doctor. The doctor wasn't a, wasn't a D boyfriend like you, what usual boyfriends are in these movies. Seeing Colton Drake go from, like, a wealthy businessman into a psychopathic person who just wanted to make the Earth evolve. I love seeing that. That was good. Now, I wish that some of the other symbiotes got enough screen time like Riot and Venom did, but still, I enjoyed each one of them. And then seeing Venom from Evolving, I loved this Venom. He was actually huge. He was... He did, I, I would have personally not cared if they had the white spider emblem, because this is supposed to be its own standalone... Venom universe. So if it had the white spider, I would have been like, okay, but like seeing him over and over again transform without the, the white symbol, I was in it. And I, I loved the hype and all looking throughout the Easter eggs. And then we got She Venom, probably the only thing that I did not expect from this movie. And seeing She Venom in a Marvel movie, seeing it even in a Venom movie, I was so hyped to see that. And I cannot wait to see the sequel where we get to see Woody Harrelson play carnage. I cannot wait to see Tom Hardy and Woody Harrelson battle out in the sequel. It's gonna be so good. Coming up at number seven is Bumblebee. Now, I only did one trailer reaction for this, and that was for the teaser. And if you go back and watch my reaction, I was a bit kind of unpleased. I mean, I was gonna go see the movie, but I was just like, mm, I don't know if this movie's gonna do great. And surprisingly, I took I took Scully to go see it. We both had a great time watching this movie. I love... I love the story of seeing Bumblebee, how he went from Cybertron and how he got to Earth and how he was in the, um, in the Doom Buggy, um, not Doom Buggy, how he was in his original car form. And the, this is the best Transformer movie I've seen. I love the first three original Transformer movies. I like number four, but it, it's kind of, uh, I like it and I don't, and the Transformers try ruin it. So when Bumblebee, when I heard Bumblebee was getting made, I was like, oh my. But it was a brand new director. I love Michael Bay, but like his his style of filmmaking has like, after Transformers 4, it, I was like, oh my. He's trying too hard. But seeing a brand new director and seeing my favorite filmmaker being the producer of this movie, Steven Spielberg captured it. Seeing the Transformers combine and like how they transform from vehicle into transformer mode it was good you saw the original optimus prime pose with the gun and the blaster you got to see decepticons vaporize human into liquid that it was so good and see i loved 
one of the reasons I love this movie so much is the very final battle. There's no big MacGuffin device. There's no ancient artifact that's destroying the world. Basically, the Decepticons are saying, here, we need to make a beacon back to Cybertron and say, hey, Megatron, we found Earth. Come get it. Come come invade Earth. And I love some of the MacGuffin devices in the Transformers movies, but for this movie, just for B to stop a beacon, that was enough for me. And then seeing the, the relation between, between Charlie and Bumblebee, I loved it, and I loved the score of the movie, I love the action, I love the humor, and the visuals were just kept, I was in it, I loved every single moment of it, and I, I feel the same way when Dwayne Johnson was cast into movies, I was not into it at first, and then when John Cena went from his wrestling career into acting, I was kind of the same way with Dwayne Johnson, I was like, Ugh, really? But John Cena portrayed this comedy a veteran who would, who took things serious, but at the very beginning, I love seeing him go from a joking uh, uh, soldier to this hardcore serious, like, we need to get things done soldier. And I love seeing it, and then seeing Bumblebee talk, it's been so long, and they had the guy from the Maze Runner, oh my goodness, he played such a good Bumblebee, from him speaking for like the first like 10 minutes of the movie, that was enough for me, that was enough, and I loved every single moment for it. Even though this is supposed to be a prequel to the original Transformers movies, and it's not supposed to be a reboot, I'm a little bit disappointed, but they could go separate ways. This could either be a reboot, or this could be just the prequel. It does not matter. But honestly, for me, I would like this to be a, a reboot, because I love the original, I love the first, I love, I kind of like the second one, but the third has always been my favorite. The, the first and third, and now this, these are my top three Transformers movies. So I would wish that they'd make a sequel to this. Coming up, number six is Ready Player One. Now, this almost made it to the top five. I really love this movie. You guys know I'm a big Steven Spielberg fan. I love I love his movies. I love how he makes movies. I love his stories. And when he got the chance to make a movie about a pop-selling, pop-cultural, uh, best-selling uh, novel, I was excited for this. Now, I haven't read the novel yet. I'm looking forward to reading it this year. But I gotta give my man some credit. The visuals, the cast. The action, the score, and the... Mm, I was... You all know me. I'm a big comic book person. I'm a big Easter egg movie. Whether it's a comic book movie or not, I'm looking for Easter eggs. So I'm looking for reference. This movie, I was bouncing out of my seat, looking and pointing at the screen. Everyone's looking at me weird. Trust me, I was going crazy with the, with the references and the Easter eggs. Oh my... I got to see my DeLorean in the 21st century. It's been so long since I've seen the DeLorean. It's only been in the Back to the Future movies. It's been referenced and cartoons or other live action movies, but seeing it move and drive and making the same sound effects, oh my, oh. I love the story. Mostly video game movies don't get fresh ratings, or they don't get really good reviews, and even though this isn't a video game movie, it's a video game based off a novel, but it still has video game references, video game visuals, video game perspectives, and video game fandom, and I loved it. I love the start of it. I love the very beginning of it. It felt like a Willy Wonka in the Charlie in the Chocolate Factory movie for me. And I'm I love this movie to death. I'm kind of disappointed it didn't make it to the top five, but I've seen this movie over and over and over again. And I love the behind the scenes, and I love how they brought this movie to life. And I, mm, if they ever, oh, oh man, I just can't wait to read the book, guys. I'm a big fan of like reading books, and if ever if there's ever a movie being made after an, after a book, I I always criticize, or I try not to criticize so much, so after I read the book, maybe I'll do another video talking about this, but without further ado, this movie right off the bat was really well done, and I was very excited to see it. Alright, we've made it to the top five of 2018. Coming up at number five is The Quiet Place. Now, I never did another, I never did a trailer reaction for this. This movie came out of the room, came out of the bloom. I had no idea what this movie's about. I just thought, oh, it's just, is this a horror movie? Is this a sci-fi movie? Is this a thriller? Is this a, a, a horror mystery? But growing up and loving movies and myself wanting to be a filmmaker one day, I always had this dream or I always had this theory of like, what would a movie be like? If it had no sound, no music, no audio, nobody talking, no, nothing making a sound. And then this movie just came out of nowhere, and I was like, okay, I have to go see this. And if I have to give 
The category that I give this the most credit is the audio and the sound design. You hear birds chirping, you hear leaves blowing, you hear water, you hear you hear the monsters, you hear the gunshots, you hear the fireworks. Like this movie, the audio team. Bra bravo to you. You guys deserve the Emmys. You guys deserve the Oscars. You guys deserve the title for this movie. Because this movie is fantastic. It has a lot of good genres. Seeing the sign language done between all the family members. And this is the smallest cast in a movie that I think I've ever seen before. And it worked. With the two main characters being actual husband and wife and a couple in real life. It worked. And I love the story of the family struggling after losing a loved one to one of these monsters. And then they're having a newborn baby after this. And the daughter and father relationship of feeling that she's the one that's responsible for the kid dying. And he blames himself. But he really honors his daughter no matter what. And he's trying to like make her feel better by building a, a new hearing aid for her. And then to give himself up as a sacrifice for his family. It was, oh my, it was so sad. And I love this movie to death. It's one of my favorite horror movies. And it's one of my favorite thrillers of all time it's I, I love it and they're currently working on the sequel for this so i would love to see it and i love the suspense between the kids being terrified where the daughter wants to go hunting and the son's like i'm too afraid to go out there and then the son and father relationship when they get to the waterfall and he's like they can't hear it you can scream you can say whatever you want i loved it no matter what i loved it and then the the, the relationship between the husband and the wife, where the mom is after she gives her baby, um, after she has her baby, like, too early, she's like, well, can, who are we? Who are we if we can't protect our children? Who are we if we can't provide health or protection or need of aid for our kids? Who are we? Are we even parents? Are we even people anymore? So I love seeing that interaction between each one. Coming up at number four is Aquaman. Now, everyone's saying, you put another DC movie as your top five. You bet. I did, because I love this movie. I, there, I, I've seen this movie two times, one with my day and one with my cousin. We all had a great time seeing this together, and I love this movie to death. I don't think, I, after the two times I've seen it, I don't have a problem with it that much. There's one thing that irritates me, which is the minor explosions that come up every now and then within the movie, but other than that, I've got no problem with this movie. The the cast, the story, the the cinematography, the score, the action, and the visuals. The visuals and the cinematography are my two favorite things about this movie. James Wan has this thing of whatever movie that he's working on, whether it's a horror movie, whether it's an action movie, whether it's a drama movie, or whether it's a superhero movie, he he takes something that's been done before, and he, what he does, he doesn't do the same thing. He twists it, and he makes it his own. My favorite scene is the scene between Mira... Aquaman and Black Manta running throughout Italy together. That whole chase scene, amazing. The visuals underwater that we've seen, we've never seen before, is breathtaking. I never once thought this is too CGI, this looks dumb, this looks fake. I believed it. I believed all the fish people. I believed all the Atlanteans. I believed the technology. I believed the, the mythology around the Atlanteans and the surface world. And I love the sudden inferences, the sudden references between this and Justice League, even though it's two separate films, but it has the same characters. But but every time I watched, when I was watching this movie, I feel like I was watching a different version of this. Even though this is Zack Snyder's take on Aquaman, this is also Jason Momoa and James Wan's um, perspective and um capture of Aquaman and who he is. I love seeing this rough down version of Aquaman where he doesn't want to be king, he doesn't want to be a hero, but because what he did in Justice League with those other heroes and becoming a team, he's starting to save people with the crew in the submarine battle at the very beginning. He starts to become that and he doesn't want to be king because of what the Atlanteans did to his mother because he blames himself for being who he is. I believe that and if you're going to make comparisons to this, to this movie, to Black Panther, get out of here. You don't know what you're talking about. This movie may have one or two things where a rival sibling or a rival wants to challenge someone for the throne. But there is two different things that are, there's, I can name you 10, even 20 things that is different. There's a difference between those two movies, starting with two different comic books. Okay, there you go. But I love every single moment of this movie. Uh, this is one of my favorite James Wan movies. 
this is my favorite portrayal of Aquaman. I've been an Aquaman fan since I was a little kid. I, I've respected Aquaman. I've stood up for Aquaman. And frankly, this is the best version I've ever seen of Aquaman ever. And I cannot wait to see what they take this into the future. Whether it's a sequel, whether this uh, just stands out other from the DC Extended Universe, or this continues to go on, I'm there day one. You saw my reactions? That's all I can say. I was a big fan of this movie. I cannot wait to see it. Coming up at number three is Avengers Infinity War. And everyone's saying, you put this at number three? Hey, it made the top five, and it made the top three. So there you go. Starting off, ten years that we've had to build up this cinematic journey. I've been watching the MCU since I was seven years old with the first Iron Man movie. And... I've been a fan of all the MCU movies. None of them make me feel like, oh, well, they did something wrong here. They made me feel a certain way that this other movie didn't make me feel. I like each and every single one of them for each different reasons. Yeah, I like Thor The Dark World. I like Captain America The First Avenger. I even like The Incredible Hulk. All right? So come at me. I like the, the first anime movie. So whatever you got to say that's going to make nothing, nothing you say about the MCU is going to make me like mad or trigger me or tick me off i like i like each and every single one of these mc movies and the build up for 10 years with all the characters that we've seen all the storylines we've seen the cast and crew number one playing these characters over the last 10 years this is their big payoff from the original avengers to the newest avengers to the standalone heroes that we've seen this all builds up the action was on point the showdowns between on titan and wakanda were amazing the build up and the hype around this movie it paid off everyone was saying it's not going to pay off you you've been hinting at thanos for so long infinity war it's not going to pay off they delivered marvel delivered it hit us with a gut punch at the very end and it leaves off for this year's avengers endgame so we're going to see how that pays off um and this will be this went down as the number one cinematic like event in cinematography like as the number one thing of all time and it paid off and i love this movie to death there's not a moment in this movie where i'm at least bored everybody got their shine and everybody everybody got their moment everybody got everybody stole the show for this movie and josh brolin he went from playing dead uh, from playing cable to playing this character and he paid off this is Thanos' movie and I loved each, I loved every single scene that he was in. And it goes down as one of my favorite MCU movies, even one of my favorite comic book movies of all time. Coming up at number two is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Now, we had this debate last year. Everybody was saying, well, for your 2017, you put Spider-Man Homecoming as number two. Why didn't you put as number one? Logan beat Spider-Man Homecoming, everyone. And you're going to, you're not going to be surprised what beats this movie. But this movie... Oh my gosh, this goes as my second favorite Spider-Man movie of all time. I love, oh my, the animation. The animation was so good. The score with the original soundtrack and the, the music and the songs that they wrote and they picked for this movie, it fit the story on point. The story pulled from the ultimate comics, pulled from the ultimate universe. It did it, and they, they made a newer version of Miles Morales' story where he's being mentored by an older Peter Parker who is rough around the edges, he doesn't know what he's doing half the time, and he doesn't want to be Spider-Man anymore, and he's old. Great. It was good. The message was great. The cast and crew was on point. Having two different people playing Spider-Man at the same time was different. You had... You had, um, you had Steve Pine... I mean, not Steve. You had Chris Pine, and then you had Jake Johnson... Too terrific. I didn't even know um, Chris Pine played the the Peter Parker in Miles' universe until I saw the cast at the very end. Great, great, great. Seeing each of the Spider Men and Spider Woman get their own screen time and everything, it was great. Miles Morales destroyed. I've been looking forward to this since I first read the Ultimate comic. Oh my gosh. And then his relation with Chip, with his mother and his father, and especially with his uncle. It paid off so well. I love this movie. The tone, the message that this movie did was undoubtedly one of the greatest Spider-Man stories in, like, cinematic, like, movie. Like, I, I don't, like, guys, I'm super, I'm so excited, guys. You know, that this movie just, you know how much I love Spider-Man. And seeing a new take and seeing a newer story for this character that I've loved. I love Peter Parker. I love seeing him. And having six movies over 
over the last decade focused on this one character isn't enough time that we get another spotlight for another Spider-Man movie that hasn't been like recognized by so many people. So I was okay with seeing a newer version and we got to see his origin and we got to see his powers. I cannot wait to see the sequel and I can't wait to see the female spinoff. It's going to be great. Oh my, oh. It was so good. Now before I get to my number one movie of 2018, I want to give out my three uh, honorable mentions. I give out number one, Jurassic World. I loved it. I don't care what people say. It was a good sequel to the 2015 reboot slash sequel to the original Jurassic Park movie. The old cast and the new cast from this movie, great. The the story could have been a little better, but the action was on point and the the twists from before the before the dinosaurs were cloned, a human being was cloned, and that was really well done. I like that sort of twist, and that's what broke John Hammond and the the Jurassic Park apart. Number two, The Incredibles 2. Seeing this movie when I was a child, growing up, I loved it, I loved it. It was like a, it was kind of like a Fantastic Four, but if Disney was making it, or like Pixar was making it, it was really well done. You had the balance between the family, uh, between the husband and the wife, between the husband and the kids, between the, the, the mother and the kids. It was really great. And then seeing, having to wait over the years for the sequel, well done. I took my little sister to go see this. We loved it, we had a good laugh, and... I'm glad Jack-Jack got his spotlight, because I've been waiting to see that character evolve since the very first movie. So it was really well done. I cannot wait to see the, the next movie. Hopefully we don't have to wait too long, and I'm not an adult by then. And I've lost faith in Disney, which I never will. Coming up at number three as my last one is Mission Impossible Fallout. Great. One of the greatest Mission Impossible, one of the greatest action movies of all time. The twist at the very end between um, Tom Cruise and... Um, Oh, my, oh, God. Who, who knew that, who knew that Superman could go from mustache meme to this brutal guy that's just punching? Now we see why that mustache was so important for that character. So I had to give it to my man. He played one heck of a, of a, of a secondary villain, but also a villain. And, oh, he, he stole the show with that movie. That movie was so good. But finally, you guys have all been waiting for this. What is my number one movie of 2018? It's Black Panther. Oh my god. Where do I even begin with this movie? The cast, on point. The story, on point. The film, with the cinematography, on point. The score and the message. This is the, like, only MCU movie with a villain that I met with his... His, his tone, his motivation, his determination, what his goal was. Now, we have seen in the last Phase 3 movies with Vulture, Hela, Ant-Man, the Wasp, even Infinity War, we've seen those villains dug deep, but we get to understand what their motivation is. But never before like this, being grown up. And then his last words to T'Challa, bury me in the ocean, were, um, where they jumped from the ships because they knew death was better than bondage. Great line. Great one, and I'm glad that we have this movie in our society to get into our society today, because it changes the way that we look at politics, the way that we look at races, and the gender, and the the meaning of the world. It was so good, even though people say, it's a fake movie, it's a fake superhero movie, it's a fake country, it's fake technology. It doesn't matter. We have people that live like this in the world. Some are poor. Some are rich, some are like me that are average, you know, pretty average. And then we have people that are into politics, we have people that are leaders, that we have people that are leading up to this expectation. Some want to use an opportunity for good, others want to use it for their own motivation. And, oh my, Ryan Coogler, get, give it up for that man, he knows how to make a movie. When I saw Creed, and I heard he was making this movie, I said, okay, this movie, without a doubt, is going to put MCU... People said the MCU movies don't make it really big, or they don't make it, like, very, like, uh, pop cultural. I said this movie will be the one that makes, like, the MCU go, okay, that's the one. That's the one that we're going to look back later and say, which MCU movie made the biggest impact in the, in the cinematic journey? Black Panther, right there. So, what did you guys think? Did you guys agree with my top ten movies? I know I kind of went on a little bit some other things, and... You guys might not be here, but if you just wanted the shorter version, you can go check out my social media post. I have a picture for each one. And if you are watching this after seeing my social media post, or if this is the video that you've seen with my movie reviews, 
thank you and seeing what like I like and what you guys like. Let me know in the comments what you guys' favorite movies of 2018. They can be more than top 10. They can even be more than 20. I don't care. Give me your list. And maybe we can collab. And if you guys want to talk more about this, about my list, go right ahead. We'll either talk on my social media pages or I'll do a live stream talking about it. Welcome to 2019, people. This movie, this year is going to be crazy. Not just with movies, but with video games, pop culture, and like I can't wait to see where this year takes off. It's going to be super, super great. But yeah, without further ado, thank you guys for so much watching this video. If you liked it, explode that like button. Love is just an amazing comments, guys. If this happens, the first video you remember, you subscribe and join Build Crap today. So, so, so much for the guys watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Good. Bye. And remember, always imagine bigger.